Norman work ethic is uh, very serious. Uh, every week we're having a meeting. He wanted to know all the detail about the market, about the distributions, about the movie, the market, and uh, other people movie or other people's uh, uh, distributor. He also want to know. He will ask everything, and we discuss every week. I think of him being such a determined person, and once he aims something, he wants to achieve something, he will go for it. He will never say no. That's what he he always said to his staff. When um, in, in meetings and all, he wants everybody to speak up for their own part. You know, not just your head of departments, but even you yourself individually. Individually, you speak for what you have done, you've executed, and you've achieved. So that's what's the best part. Tell us about the regulation side of the business. We live in a relatively conservative market. Yes. How, how does the regulations help you or hinder you in some ways? For now, I would say that the, the censorship board is uh, uh, more liberal than before. Uh, they are more open to new ideas and uh, there's less uh, control in a form of uh, any form of artistic interpretation of a story or, or whether it's a TV show or even a film. I would say that the government is opening up. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say the, the society is also opening up. You know, they are more exposed to content from abroad. And, uh, and, and and they realize that what we're doing here in Malaysia is not that bad after all. I think eventually, uh, you know, as, the, as, as the population or society grows to become a mature audience, they will accept information or entertainment in, in different forms. You mentioned earlier that a lot of people send you stuff all the time mm-hmm. and they lack or they, well, they can't see the bigger picture. Yes. You know, they don't use their common sense. Mm-hmm. Is that because of exposure Mm-hmm. Exposure to creativity, yeah. Because regulations sometimes hinder creativity, yes. or they want to do this, but they can't because of yeah. the laws, yes. or because of the society that we live in, or because yes. of religion. I would say that you know, if you want to make your product commercial, you got to be sensitive about these things anyway. You know, whether the government has got regulations on it or not, you still need to be very careful because it comes with responsibility. Spider-Man said that. <laughs> <laughs> great powers come with great responsibility, right? Uh, so I guess that you know, it's your responsibility to ensure that you, know, you, you send the right messages as well and try to build uh, a society that you... you know, you're you're the, uh, the thinkers or the, the, the people who, are, who, who think of interpreting art and try to send messages in a way that is actually got substance and in an, entertain, in an entertaining way. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it does hinder, uh, uh, let's say, creativity yeah, if the government controls. But I don't think the government is actually controlling in any way because you know, we talk about like, you can't shoot nudity here. I have no problem with that. We don't mm-hmm. do these kind of movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's no profanity. Uh, sometimes, you know, like uh, strong languages in films, you know, you see that in foreign films, but you don't see that in Malaysia. But does that really reflect our society? I think there, there is a reason why certain things are not uh, open, as open as the others. Because I think the society themselves may not accept it uh, in a way that if it's, it's so liberal and open elsewhere. Business tip number two, it's all in the details. Like Norman said, be careful what you're signing. Really open the document. Look at the marketing plan, look at the finance plan, because if you don't know what you're signing, it could bite you, and if it bites you, it could lead to a loss of profits. We're just going to take a very short commercial break right here on Entrepreneur, but when we come back, we're going to learn more about Norman and this glamorous or not so glamorous entertainment business. We'll see you soon, right here on Entrepreneur. Right. Hello everybody and welcome back to Entrepreneur. You're with me, Ben Ibrahim, and if you're just joining us for the very first time today, we're talking to Mr. Norman Abdul Halim, Group Executive President of KRU Studios, and if you're wondering where we are as well, we're in the lovely and dynamic KRU studio itself. Norman, <laughs> thank you very much for giving us some time today. My pleasure. Yeah. Now, we spoke earlier about how difficult and challenging but rewarding it is yes. to run your own business. That's right. But what stops you from making money? More money, that is. Problem uh, continues to be our number one enemy is piracy. Uh, there's a lot of leakage in the industry, uh, not just for the music industry but also for the film industry and content industry at large. Um, if that is being addressed, uh, not only locally but also internationally, I, I believe that. It's just a matter of time to actually to see more content that is actually delivered on a global scale being produced in any parts of the world, especially Malaysia, 
Fair enough, fair enough. Now, piracy, like you said, is a huge issue, yeah. not just in Malaysia, but overseas as well. That's right. And given the current situation, how do you combat piracy? Well, first of all, I think the education is very important, uh, giving awareness to the audience and uh, those fans who actually mm -hmm. support those artists and, and uh, those people who actually like to uh, uh, acquire content, uh, like whether it's a film or TV shows. We try to educate them, and I think the issue right now, the piracy is actually available on the internet, which is actually the more serious problem, which is, is digital uh, piracy mm -hmm. compared to physical piracy. Uh, and how we address that is by actually look at the best practice uh, elsewhere, like for example in France, in UK, Korea is a very good example, how they manage to actually overcome that problem, not wholly, but it's always a continuous uh, battle to actually combat piracy. Um, and by blocking sites or even um, uh, giving them warning that, uh, that those consumers who actually, or those users who get access to all these uh, portals with, which, uh, which provide all this illegal content, uh, if they're being informed or being warned that they're entering into an illegal site, you know, eventually they will realize that, that, uh, that they will need to actually support the, um, the, the legitimate industry mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah. or to buy legitimate content from us. Yeah. Okay. Now this business is ever so competitive. Yes. Where do you get your creative ideas from? <laughs> well, we have a creative panel. Uh, really? Meet, yes. Uh, every, every Thursday night, we we'll actually group together and discuss about various projects. Basically, it starts off uh, with an, an idea of a particular genre. If let's say we're doing a creature feature or we're doing a disaster movie or doing a superhero movie or whether are we actually going to try to actually uh, uh, do something that is uh, with a, with a K-pop phenomena, like for example <laughs> in music, right? Yeah. So what do we do in terms of addressing those markets as well? So, you know, whether it's a boy band or girl band, what kind of music that suits these talents? So I guess uh, it starts with the concept by knowing your market. And once you know who you're trying to reach out to, you, re you reverse that and try to actually create a formula to reach out to those markets. Now, every creative person has their own inspiration or inspirations. Mm -hmm. Who is your biggest inspiration? Well, I must say that uh, when, I, when we first started as, as recording artists, you know, we, uh, my, my, uh, the biggest inspira inspiration to KRU was the Beatles. And, and creatively, <laughs> yeah, the yes, Beatles. Of course. Uh, uh, and there were other, other bands in the 90s, uh, even like people like uh, Boys to Men, Bobby Brown, uh, even Vanilla Ice. <laughs> at oh one my point, God, that's at a blast from the past. I know, yeah. I know, I know, I yeah. know. I'm not, but I'm not shy to admit that. Yeah, hey, I was uh, a Vanilla yeah, Ice fan yeah, once upon a exactly. time too. Yeah. But I guess, um, you know, you have different inspirations and, 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 and talk, about, talk about international movies. Uh, you know, we like what Pixar is doing, you know, how they actually create a brand for themselves and, and be focused in terms of the particular kind of genre and reaching out to that targeted audience. And even locally here, I mean, I would say that uh, I, I admire, you know, how Air Asia is being built, and and uh, Tan Sri uh, Tony Fernandez, uh, how he actually built, and uh, the the airline industry, pretty much, you know, with this with this group of people. So I guess um, we have international ambitions, and we would like to actually uh, benchmark us against those people who are successful, whether they are in the same industry or they are from outside of the entertainment business. We we'll, we we'll like to see what things they are doing right. And how can we achieve our goals by, you know, using that as, as a good um, uh, benchmark for the company? If you had to groom a younger person or a younger version of yourself yeah. to the business, how would you teach them this particular business, the entertainment business? Uh, nothing beats the, um, the uh, exposure that you get in terms of having a hands-on experience in terms of managing the business. There's nothing you can study in, in, in universities or any or books that you can read. You can actually use that as, a, as a, some form of uh, getting some basic information. And guidance, yeah. As a guidance, but at the end of the day, it's about handling it yourself. Uh, I'm trying to find a prodigy for myself <laughs> right now, the second liner. Because I'm I sure there's a lot of people who line up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have to work cheap though. <laughs> small, 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 small salary for the tuition fees that I'm giving, I'm waiving. Good yeah. entrepreneur tactic. <laughs> yeah. I need to look at that generation of like 15 years younger than me so that there's, there's continuity for the company. And it's not just me. I just look at my senior level of management team, like for example, my VPs and, and CEOs. They are in the, the same age group as, as, as me, and I would need to actually see them you know, able to grow and try to create the second liners who are able to actually deliver the, uh, the bigger plans for Carry Studios in the future. Because we don't want Carry Studios uh, to be uh, just uh, a company that is actually uh, active during the time whereby the founders are there. Uh, I, don't, I don't intend to turn this to be a family company. It's got to be uh, institutionalized and, and turn it into be a corporate 
yeah, from private. the corporate body, yeah. whereby you know with listing plans and all those uh, uh, corp good corporate uh, practices that we can actually um, you know uh, match ourselves with other best players in the world. And final question, as usual, can you advise our viewers a few business tips on how to run a good business or how to start a good business? Uh, I, I've seen a lot of uh, ambitious uh, entrepreneurs they try to actually do so many things at the same time and eventually not achieving anything. And I think most important is to take baby steps. You small know, steps. Yeah. Small, small steps and, and, and uh, work strategically how you can build a business. There's not, you got to actually, um, as, as you actually progress and as an entrepreneur, every day is a learning day. You learn new things as well. So let's not make that, that uh, tuition session to be an expensive, expensive session whereby you end up paying lots of losses uh, and you, you're unable to actually recover back from that. So in a way, you've got to anticipate you know, whatever risk that you take. You know, and take small steps, and eventually you get there. You've got to be patient because mm. day, you, you <coughs> cannot actually uh, uh, try to actually um, uh, achieve success at a short period of time. Well, business learning number three, the final business learning for today. First, you've got to have a good creative concept. Norman says he meets with his team every Thursday to discuss that creative concept. From that creative concept, you've got to identify the talent pipeline. If you have the creative concept, if you have the talent pipeline, then your business will be here for a good long time to come. On behalf of Mr. Norman and myself, Ben Ibrahim, have a great week. This is Entrepreneur. We'll catch you next week. Okay, Norman, as usual, quick personality quiz. Favorite food? Nasi lemak. Nasi lemak. Oh, yeah, true. Local patriot. <laughs> Question number two, favorite car? Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. Favorite dream car? Bentley. Bentley. Uh, do you have a Bentley at the moment? Working towards that. Working towards that. Good man, good man. <laughs> Favorite holiday spot? Sydney. Sydney. Why? I just like the environment. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> an, act, an actor that would play you in a film. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha there. Can't think of anyone. Okay. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad Pitt. Oh my god. Bradley Pitt, Malaysian style. That's, I'd like to see that. And the final question if you were stuck in the middle of nowhere, no ATM, no satellite transmission, no phones, yeah? Okay. You only had about 20 ringgit in your wallet. Okay. What would you do with it? I can't buy anything with 10 ringgit. Can la, but your resources are a bit stretched. <laughs> okay. Um, can I buy a prepaid card to call someone? Is that what you do? Yeah, prepaid I'll do card that. to call someone? Yeah. Prepaid card to Rescue call me. someone? Rescue me. Rescue <laughs> me. That's what you would do. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs> All right. <laughs>